Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics, and this is the Sig Sauer MCX TAC Ops in 300 Blackout. For a very long time, I was ambivalent about two things. Well, more than two things, but two things specifically that we're going to talk about in this video. The 300 Blackout cartridge and Sig Sauer rifles. The uh, reason I was ambivalent about 300 Blackout is it just hadn't been around long enough for there to be a lot of use data, real-world use data. I'm a very self-defense focused instructor, uh, and I'm very self-defense focused when I think about firearms. Uh, and cartridges are definitely part of that. So before I decided to buy into any new cartridge that comes along, I want to know how it performs in the real world. And uh, just based on the nature of how often or how seldom, depending on if you're optimist, pessimist, or cautiously one way or the other, uh, you look at cartridge uses in the real world, uh, it does take some time for that data to be collected. So within probably the past year, I started getting into 300 Blackout because I'd gotten a lot of good quality information from trusted individuals of the use of the cartridge in self-defense situations, military, law enforcement, uh, and self-defense. So I'm like, okay, uh, it's time for me to, uh, to go ahead and check this out. I liked the concept of the 300 Blackout round because of its performance envelope and almost like, I wouldn't say a replacement for a submachine gun, but it would give me similar ballistics out of a shorter barrel uh, than what I would have to get out of a potentially longer barrel if I was going to go with the 5.56223 or similar cartridge. And as far as SIG rifles go, uh, I had experiences with them in the past and they seemed reliable, but there was nothing about them that made them stand out and made me want to pursue using SIG rifles over some of the rifles I already owned or some of the other rifles that caught my attention. One of the things that appeals to me about the 300 Blackout round is I can still get good terminal ballistics out of shorter barrels compared to shorter barrels and other rifle cartridges. Uh, specifically something that I could get in, you know, a uh, seven or eight inch compared to, you know, what I might have to go a little bit longer in a different cartridge to get similar performances in terminal ballistics. So the 300 Blackout being able to easy, you know, of course the rifle depends, but being able to easily switch between super and subsonic rounds depending on what I'm trying to do with it is definitely something that was always appealing to me, but I had to, like I said, uh, wait for there to be enough data out there, anecdotal as it is, for me to be like, okay, this is something to explore. What appeals to me about the MCX line, specifically the TAC Ops, which uh, apparently is an exclusive to Talo distributors, is the fact that it's a folding stock piston driven rifle. Uh, it comes from the factory with a trainer can in place and I went ahead and removed that trainer can and went with Sig Sauer's SRD 762 Ti which is a direct thread titanium suppressor. So for this review you're kind of getting a review of the TAC Ops MCX but you're also getting a review of the suppressor at least in regards to the 300 blackout round. What appeals to me mainly over the 300 Blackout round, which I kind of already mentioned, is how I can effortlessly go back and forth from Super to Subsonic if the rifle allows me to do so. The original specs from, from uh, AAC on the 300 Blackout round, Sammy specs, some people just build the gun for those specifications and they don't allow for a lot of adjustment. One thing that Primary Weapon Systems did, and I don't want to use this as a comparison, but just mentioning an example, uh, with their uh, Mark 109 is the gas system is not adjustable, which is a departure for PWS because all of their rifles have adjustable gas. But with 300 Blackout, they went away from it, which tended to make the rifle kind of gassy and left uh, me wanting a little bit more performance, I shouldn't say performance, a little bit more comfort when it came to the recoil impulse shooting supersonics, whereas it performed great shooting subsonic. With the MCX TAC Ops rifle, I have the ability to adjust the gas system. I can adjust the gas system and tune it for supersonic or subsonic. Another great feature that a lot of people want, uh, people believe if a rifle has a folding stock, it should be able to be fired with the stock folded, which if you've ever fired a folded stock rifle, you know that it's pretty aggravating, but people think about emergency type situations. If the stock's folded, could it be deployed and fired before the operator, the user, 
had time to fold the stock out? And the answer is obviously yes. SIG uses their own proprietary piston system, which I kind of liken to a short stroke piston. I'm a huge piston rifle fan. I've never been a big believer in short stroke piston systems because it's gas on metal, which is then on metal, which then uh, activates the cycle of fire. That doesn't mean my mind can't be changed. So going into this, I had a round that I'd recently warmed up to, 300 Blackout, a rifle company, or I should say a firearms company that makes rifles that I had always been kind of indifferent about, and a piston operating system that I've never really been a fan of. So in the 2000 round review process of this rifle, was my mind going to be changed? Now getting into the features of the uh, MCX TAC Ops, uh, you got a 6.75 inch barrel. I like that a lot. I think it's a really good length, especially for something that's going to be integrally suppressed because the uh, the TAC Ops version ships with the trainer can in place. If you were to remove that can, you could shoot it without a suppressor on it, but the barrel is recessed inside the rail, so it's kind of set up and geared towards an integrally suppressed system. Uh, and that's why I went ahead and went with a suppressor on it. I actually haven't fired the thing unsuppressed. It's been suppressed the whole time because I kind of feel like that's the design intent. There is no muzzle device, although theoretically you could take the rail off and put a muzzle device on it. But you're probably going to end up doing damage to something by shooting it that way. So a suppressor is the way to go. It's very centric to the AR platform. The controls are very, very similar. Some of the parts are actually even interchangeable. Uh, I do like that a lot because one operating system, is, one that, that I know very, very well, is the AR platform. So transferring over, I didn't have to relearn anything or train uh, to do things differently on this rifle than I would on any other AR that I have. Uh, twist rate is one in five, which, you know, and again, there's a lot of people out there that know more about the 300 Blackout round than I do, but just based on my own research and, and the 300 Blackouts that I've used, that's a pretty reasonable twist rate for the common grains that you're gonna shoot both in Super and Subsonic out of 300 Blackout. With the suppressor in place, uh, it is a little heavy. Um, I wouldn't say it's needlessly heavy, but you're definitely going to notice the weight. Uh, quoted weight is eight pounds, and I think that's dependent. Uh, that's pretty much quoted on the uh, the training suppressor that ships with it. And your suppressor that you choose to use may plus or minus that weight. You know, as much as half a pound, depending on what you go with. Going with the titanium suppressor, uh, notice the weight stayed right around in that range. Uh, it's not unduly heavy, but for a uh, firearm that still comes in at SBR length, eight pounds is a little bit of weight. It's something that you definitely have to get used to, especially if you're one of those people that prefers to make your rifles as light as possible. The MCX ships with their own uh, flip-up metal sights, which I thought was a nice touch. Also comes with a few magazines and some other good accessories. Uh, it is an M-lock rail, which means I can put my accessories on there. Because this is a recess suppressor, I just expected, based on my um, experience in the past of using like AR-15s that were integrally suppressed, like the Gemtech Integra, they get hot really, really fast. So I went with the Rail Scales Exos, which are um, a great wide uh, grip panel slash heat guard. They're not going to completely keep me from burning myself, but they are going to provide me a more uh, grippy surface and an extra degree of heat protection that I know I'm going to need once I start running this thing. Now one of the very first things I do after zeroing a rifle or pretty much any accessory I, I, I review, I'm going to do what's known as the burn down. It's going to be 500 rounds as quickly as possible. 500 rounds as fast as possible basically to see how the accessory or in this case the firearm and suppressor behave with an accelerated rate of fire because some things can handle a very casual 500 rounds over the period of a day or six days or six years but how are they going to perform or how are they going to hold up to 500 rounds and yeah on a semi-automatic it usually takes me three to four minutes to get that 500 down 500 rounds down range so here is your burn down Just as I expected, because my support hand is hanging out literally uh, over the back end of the suppressor where the suppressor meets the barrel right there at the gas block, this thing got really, really hot over those 500 rounds. And it actually, at a certain point, probably right around 350, 375 rounds, became pretty uncomfortable to shoot. 
because it's integrally suppressed. So my rail is sitting over my suppressor, which is building up a lot of heat because I'm firing a lot of rounds through it very, very quickly. Uh, that is, an, uh, to a certain degree, an unrealistic rate of fire. So I'm not really going to hold that against it because I knew going in with the suppressor recessed into the rail, which is my grip surface for my support side hand, I know heat is going to be a contentious issue that I'm going to have to deal with. So that isn't necessarily a negative. That's just kind of why I usually stay away from integrally suppressed or things that are recessed suppressed uh, inside the rail because that's where I put my hand. Now I could have gone with a different version of the MCX that doesn't have the rail that extends out over the suppressor but that seriously limits my grip options and it makes me kind of stack in on top of the gun a lot more than I would like to. I don't like those submachine gun length rifles especially when you get into the shorter barrel lengths like you know just seven inches or six inches or even worse five inches they're very uncomfortable to shoot for long periods of time and because my grip options are limited my ability to shoot accurately in certain situations is compromised because those grip options are limited so it's not something i really care for so a more reasonable rate of fire if i'm only going to shoot you know a magazine every few minutes depending on what i'm doing there's absolutely no reason why the suppressor being inside the rail is going to become an issue it's on those higher rate of fires that you're going to start to run into problems my standout favorite feature for the tac ops is the adjustable gas i like being able to adjust the gas on a 300 blackout even though it wasn't uh, from i guess an inception arguably intended to be adjustable by the way the aac designed and intended the round uh, but just because you you have something in your mind doesn't mean somebody's going to come along later and find a way to finesse it or to fine-tune it. Being able to adjust the gas for super to subsonic really mellows out the recoil impulse. And one of the reasons I've never been a huge fan of short-stroke pistons has been the recoil impulse. Some people talk about the pang. I don't really hear that, but I feel the weight transfer more considerably on a short stroke piston gun than I would on like a DI or a long stroke uh, piston with like progressive venting. Um, that being said, the piston system never presented any problems. Over 2,000 rounds, I did not experience any malfunctions with the MCX TAC Ops uh, magazine, piston system, or otherwise. Uh, so as far as the short stroke piston being kind of a concern of mine, something I was apprehensive about going into the review, after 2,000 rounds, I don't mind it at all. I would still prefer it to be a long stroke piston system, gas on metal versus gas on metal on metal. Uh, but that being said, I have nothing negative to say about it. It just comes down to a personal preference at that point, me wanting a long stroke versus a short stroke piston. Now, the rear of the uh, MCX lower receiver ha has a pick section. So you can, any stock that is native to pick mounting for that 90 degree angle, you can put on the MCX. It shipped, uh, originally shipped with a pistol brace. Uh, I SBR'd it immediately because I didn't like the brace and it's no reason not to SBR it anyway since I am an SOT so I can do that pretty easily. Uh, but I purchased uh, SIG's uh, collapsing stock that is kind of native for this system and I don't really care for it. And the reason I don't care for it, two reasons. One, the cheek weld is a little severe. Uh, you have to get really in on the gun and it reminds me of sub submachine guns where I feel like I've got a dull knife against the edge of my face. There's not a lot of cheek weld or cheek flare here for a little bit of long-term comfort. Not really that big of a deal because I'm shooting through in blackout, there's not a lot of recoil. Uh, but if I'm shooting, you know, over 2,000 rounds, there are some days when I'd put three, 400 rounds through it, and I mean, burn down alone. But then continuing on from the burn down, I'd shoot three or 400 rounds in a range trip and it would leave my jaw feeling just a little sore, not something I cared for. Another thing I didn't really care for is how it's released I have to press up to fold it out so I've which is kind of an awkward uh, thing to deal with it's not exactly a sexy deployment or a fast deployment you got to put a lot of pressure on that stock an opposing force on the rifle itself to get that fold to occur out or in and I didn't really care for that as you can see even now I've, I've folded it in and out count at this point countless times and it's still not the most fluid motion not a huge deal because all things being honest, unless this thing's being stored for long term or for travel, I'm going to leave the stock folded out because I don't need it to fold unless it's for long term travel or for storage. Uh, I'm not really going to have a deployment issue where I'm like, oh, I wish that stock was easier to fold out. I don't care for it, but I'm not going to hold it against it because it's got to, the, the hinging mechanism has to operate in some way. And this was probably the most simplistic way to design this stock to minimize its overall footprint on the rifle and have it still be a folding stock. 
Now, what kind of accuracy should you expect out of a 300 blackout, especially with one with a sub 9 inch, sub 10 inch barrel, getting into that SBR or AR platform esque pistol length barrel? Should you expect MOA accuracy? Should you, this is something you zero for 100 yards? I kind of leave that up to the individual. I'm perfectly uh, aware that there are some 8 inch guns out there that can shoot MOA at 100, uh, 100 yards and that's the quality of the barrel, the quality of the round. Because this is more of an SBR focused and I, I, I kind of put it more in the uh, submachine gun category even though it's not ballistically technically true, uh, but that's just kind of how I view it as filling that, that um, category a little bit more than like a shorter 5.56223 would. Uh, I put a 25 yard zero on it just because usually with shorter barrels uh, I use a shorter zero 25 yards because the reasonable range I expect to use it at is considerably less. If you think about actual submachine guns a lot of them 25 yard zero is what everybody's been using. I don't really care for the 25 yard zero for rifles that are intermediate distance rifles or patrol rifles or self-defense rifles something I can expect to shoot out to a much greater distance. Using a red dot uh, aim point on it, zeroed it at 25 yards. Um, here's a five round group, to, just to give you an, a, an example of the 25 yard zero accuracy I could expect out of the MCX TAC Ops. For zero distance purposes, great group. It's a very good grouping gun. Now, I don't want to extrapolate what MOA it shoots based on 25 yards. I want to go ahead and actually shoot it at 100 to see what kind of grouping I'm getting. Now, for the 100 yard group, uh, just like the 25 yard group, I zeroed it on supersonic ammunition. Uh, after this review, I'm probably going to re-zero it on subsonic and probably never fire supersonic through it again uh, unless the zeros are very, very similar. Uh, and they usually aren't, especially as distance increases, you start to see a big discrepancy in performance between your super and your subsonic rounds, depending on how far you want to shoot. Again, keeping in mind, I don't reasonably expect to use this thing at great distances. It's not something if I'm going to shoot out to 100 meters, this wouldn't be the first rifle I grabbed. I feel like it's more of a uh, close structure, close quarters type distance rifle than I would think about it for you know longer intermediate or longer distance shooting. So shooting the uh, 300 blackout supersonic on the zero. Here's a five round group at 100 yards. That's a 100 yard group fired on a two MOA aim point out of a 6.75 inch barrel suppressed. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, I like that the accuracy is there, and if you've been following for a while, you know, kind of one of the things I say occasionally is only accurate rifles are interesting. Um, I firmly believe that something with the right round, with the right optic, with the right shooter, with the right fundamentals can still be inherently accurate even with that shorter barrel. So I'm still able to maintain a pretty good degree of accuracy shooting out to 100 yards, which realistically is probably... I wouldn't say the maximum envelope, wouldn't say the maximum effective distance of this barrel and that round, but for my personal use when I think about, okay, likely situations, who would I recommend this to, what their what their needs are, if you're going to shoot 100 yards and in and you want a 300 blackout, this is a, a really good choice, really good barrel, really good suppressor configuration. Talking just about the suppressor, uh, this is a review uh, of the M6 TAC Ops, but it, it, it's designed to be, you know, with a recessed suppressor, integrally suppressed, even though it's technically not integrally suppressed because the suppressor is kind of whatever you want to put in it. Uh, unlike some of the other systems that default to one specific type of suppressor or the barrel is machined into a suppressor. Uh, I went with the, the SRD, the 762 Ti. Uh, it's rated up to 300 Win Mag. It's just, uh, just over 9 inches and it's got a reasonable weight profile. It is titanium, so it's a little lighter than some of the other suppressors that I could have used, some of the ones that I already have. I wanted a direct threat. I didn't want to have to put a muzzle device on something to where the muzzle device would sit inside the, the rail and potentially create issues. I didn't want to, if I was going to take the rail off for any reason, I only want to have to do it once. Luckily, because it ships with a trainer can, uh, I only had to take the rail off to tighten that suppressor down. Now, you could permanently attach it if you want to. Uh, my feeling on that is I don't want to remove direct thread suppressors very often, but I do want to remove them occasionally during cleaning. So I like the ability to put the suppressor on there, tighten it down really good. Um, I use a, a rubber wrench strap and when I feel like I need to take the suppressor off for cleaning purposes, very easy for me to put that uh, wrench strap back on and loosen the suppressor. Uh, I did take the rail off um, 
for the wrench flats, but I kind of found after that that using that wrench strap suppressor similar to an oil filter wrench was giving me consistent tightness that I needed even as the gun got really, really hot during high rates of fire. Can wasn't coming loose, so that's something I was going to stick with. Uh, you can go either way with it. The rail comes off very, very easily. Of course, the only problem with having you take the rail off to remove the suppressor is if you're using iron sights only or if you're using some kind of laser device or you have an optic that bridges onto that rail, you're going to have to recontend with re-zeroing those things when you put the rail back on just to make sure that the zero is there. Because if you remove the rail, put it back on, may not return to zero on that front iron sight, that laser unit, what have you. Hands down, my favorite thing about the MCX over the performance is the trigger. They got a two-stage match trigger in it, and I really, really liked it. I would like to have this trigger in some of my other rifles. Uh, it's got a reasonable pull to it. It's got a very definitive two-stage, and they call it match grade, which sometimes it's hard to feel match grade, sometimes it's not. This trigger pulls very, very smoothly. And keep in mind, I'm shooting 100% suppressed over 2,000 rounds. I'm not getting a lot of grittiness over time that builds up in that trigger. Uh, one of the things I've had experience, uh, I've experienced on, on quite a few rifles, is when you suppress them, uh, that excess gas and carbon coming back into the chamber, if there's no system mitigating it prior to being in the chamber, uh, even the best triggers can start to get gritty, uh, start to feel less sure, less definitive uh, during the, the cycle of pulling the trigger, be it a single stage or a two stage. Uh, that speaks to the design of the gas operating system, uh, the piston operating system that's in the MCX, just as much as it does the trigger itself. So if I was going to pick a, uh, a standout favorite feature, uh, it would definitely be the trigger. If you're not adverse to having more than one tack stamp, I would definitely recommend this as an SBR and then put whatever your flavor a, a suppressor in there. Um, I had really good luck with the SIG suppressor. I would definitely recommend it if somebody said, hey, what would you put with what? Uh, it doesn't have to be brand specific. You can go with any, and I would recommend a direct thread, but you could go with any direct thread suppressor that could handle super and subsonic. If you wanted to get really cute with it, you could go with something uh, like uh, an Omega 9, as long as you shot 300 blackout uh, subsonic uh, through it, you could definitely do that. But nah, there's a bunch of different suppressor choices out there. If you wanted to only have one stamp, you could permanently attach a suppressor to it, pin and weld, if you really want to do that. I wouldn't recommend doing that just because cleaning through uh, pin and weld integrally suppressed can be problematic, although you don't technically have to clean it out. Just uh, punch it out with a, with a wire brush or whatever your preferred cleaning method would be. You don't have to do a full discipline. I wouldn't push patches through it, definitely. You don't want to get patches stuck in your baffles inside the suppressor. You definitely want to avoid that. But if you're looking for something that's got a lot of cool options to it, it's got an adjustable gas system, it's got a folding stock, a bunch of different stocks out there can be can be mated to the to the receiver. It's very AR centric, a lot of parts commonality there. It's got a really good trigger. It's pretty accurate uh, given the barrel length, uh, and you can use just about whatever direct thread press you want on there as long as the length is right there in that eight to nine inch range to get it outside of the rail. If that's something you want, you could probably go the shorter can to recess it just a little bit. Uh, M lock native and comes with you know comes with iron sights because you don't always want to have to go out and buy extra sights if you don't need to. Uh, it's got a lot of QD options on it and the controls are very, um, I guess, firm. Uh, I didn't feel a lot of play in any of the like the bolt release or the magazine release. Over 2,000 rounds, every single button and switch and trigger I had to pull worked the way it was supposed to. Uh, and that's 2,000 rounds of nothing but suppressed fire shooting supers and subsonic. There's a lot of, well, a lot of carbon and a lot of other byproducts of gunfire being introduced into the upper and lower receiver during that process and everything stayed good to go. I didn't feel like it got gummy, it didn't get sticky, it didn't get gritty. Um, and accuracy and performance from first to last round was awesome. So. Uh, said at the beginning of the video, very apprehensive about those two things. My mind has been changed on 300 Blackout because there's way more data out there than there was when the round first came about. As far as SIG's rifles go, I'm now kind of interested in picking up some other ones because I was so impressed with the uh, execution on the MCX. I don't know what I'm going to get, I don't know when I'm going to get it, but now I'm definitely giving SIG a second look uh, versus my experiences in the past. So if this was something you were interested in, you're kind of on the fence whether to buy it, my advice would be if you're planning on buying it, just go ahead and get it. It's a great little gun. Uh, it's going to fill that 300 blackout roll very, very nicely if you want that shorter barrel for a more compact overall gun. If you wanted something that integrally suppressed or recessed suppressor inside the rail very, very well, this is a good choice. Although make sure you've got some kind of grip panels or, or heat protection on that Ford rail because it starts to heat up pretty quick just based on the way the suppressor has to sit inside the rail. Um, 
but yeah, I, I'm definitely a, definitely a fan of the SIG uh, MCX TAC Ops from uh, Tyler Distributors. I'm Aaron Count with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.